Hello and welcome back to Tech Talk. Today we're going to talk about something that's near and dear to my heart and that is getting wicked deals on computer parts prices so low that you can't imagine the quality that you receive. That is the kind of deal that I like. That's exactly what we're going to talk about today and specifically we're going to talk about the best deal on a CPU air cooler I think there is on the market right now. Now I want to let you know that this uh, air cooler that I've tested and about to review for you, I didn't get it for free, it's not part of a promotion, this is something I bought for myself, paid for it myself, the only reason I'm talking about it is because I think it's a really good deal. So to give you a little bit of a background, um, I had a bunch of computer parts kicking around and, and the way I came to have this cooler is I had all these computer parts kicking around. I had an Inwin 301 Micro ATX case, I had 16 gigabytes of fast DDR4 RAM, um, I had a couple other things, I had a Radeon RX 570 8 gig video card and I thought to myself, well why have all these parts sitting on a shelf somewhere? Why don't I put them into a computer and put them to use? And about the time I was thinking about that, my work changed such that I wasn't going into work anymore, I'm working remotely now. Now up in my office I had my gaming computer and it's got a big 32 inch monitor and it just it wasn't great for work, working on a monitor that big and I didn't like having my work stuff on my gaming PC. So well, why don't I take all these parts and turn it into a work PC? And what I built it for was for doing my work, which is database, Excel, email, you know, surfing the web. It's all pretty light duty stuff. But I also wanted it for editing photos and video. Now to be clear, the only video I shoot is 1080p, so it wasn't going to be doing 4K video. So I thought, well, I'll build a computer around that use. So what I did was, uh, well, I the problem was I had to build it really cheap because Last count, I think I have about 13 computers in my house. My wife is a little bit tired of it. So I had to build it on a budget so that she wouldn't complain. So what I did was I got an ASRock B550M motherboard. I got a uh, NZXT 550 watt power supply. And I got a Ryzen 5 4500 CPU. Now I do not want to see a bunch of hateful comments in the comments below regarding the CPU. Yes, I know it's not the strongest CPU out right now. Yes, I know it's probably a 4600G where the IGP failed quality control and so AMD uh, disabled it and sold it as the 4500 CPU. I know all that. The thing that is, I was building to a price point. I got this for just over $100 Canadian, which is like 70 bucks US. For business applications, for editing photos and videos, this is a great CPU. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it, and at the price point, it made a lot of sense for me. So don't give me hate mail. I'm aware of the CPU. I bought it for a reason. That having been said, this particular CPU comes with the Ryzen Wraith Stealth Cooler. Now, if you're familiar with the Stealth Cooler, it's a solid piece of aluminum. It's quite thin, quite small. That's great for fitting it into a low-profile case, maybe, but it sucks as far as a cooler goes. It's not a good cooler. So I thought, well, I should probably do something different with the cooler because there's one thing that I always build my computers to, even my gaming rig here. Uh, I always build them to run cool and run quiet. I do not like a loud computer. I just don't, even when I'm gaming. So I didn't want to spend money on a cooler, and, and typically I run Noctua coolers. Most of my machines have Noctua, and I have a home theater PC upstairs that has a Ryzen 5 1500X in it, and it's got a Noctua cooler on it. So I thought maybe what I would do is I'd take the cooler from the 1500X, which is this bad boy here, and I would put it in my new office PC. Now there's a couple of things about this particular cooler. This is a Wraith Spire cooler. Um, First of all, the aluminum block is much thicker than the Raised Stealth. The Raised Stealth is maybe 60% of that thickness or 70% of that thickness. This is a bigger aluminum block. Being that this is the old Stealth, the current Raised Stealth is just a solid block of aluminum. This one isn't. These old ones have a copper core in them, which is much more efficient for transferring heat. So technically, this is a much better cooler than the current Raised Spires. Now, I figured that for office use, this would be fine. I put this on the, the Ryzen 5 4500 CPU and I worked with it and it was, it was okay. Um, but the fan started to develop a little bit of a tick in it. And being that I'm really fussy about noises, that tick started to drive me crazy. It wasn't super loud, it was just as the fans are, it's going tick, 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 tick. Um, didn't like that. So I thought, okay, I'm going to have to replace this thing because it's irritating me. And what I did was I thought, I wonder how good the cooling is on this. And I knew it wasn't, you know, back when these came out, reviewers said, oh, for a stock cooler, this is great. It's a really good stock cooler. It's probably all you need. 
And that may be true, but it's still not a great cooler. When I was doing video editing with this, I'd often see CPU temperatures at 76, 78 degrees. That's not catastrophic. But remember, I'm only editing 1080p video. I'm not really stressing the CPU out that much. So what I did was I, I ran Prime95 on my computer. I did the small FFT test with AVX and AVX2 instructions. Now, if you look up that test, everybody will tell you that is far harsher than anything you're likely to you know, see in real life. And I get that. It is a brutal CPU torture test. Um, but I thought, I wonder what this, this cooler will do with it. So I started running the test, and with seconds, my CPU temperature shot up to 92 degrees, and I had to shut it down. Didn't take long at all. Straight to 92, shut it down just to protect the, the CPU. So that wasn't really a good performance. I, I know it's a brutal test, but I would have thought this would have done better. Uh, so what I did was I started looking around. I didn't want to spend any money. You know, I didn't want to buy another Noctua because they are expensive. I know they're well made and they're quiet and all that. And I, I love them. Noctua is a great company for coolers. I just didn't want to spend the money because I knew my wife would give me grief. So I started looking around. You know, what can I get for cheap that maybe would be just a little bit better than this AMD um, Spire cooler? And nothing really kind of sunk in that I, I liked. Nothing was really attractive to me. But as I was searching around Amazon, I came across this company here. And it's called Thermalrite. And this is the Thermalrite Assassin X120 RSE. Now, when I first saw it, this was $21 Canadian, uh, which is like 15, 16 bucks American. And I thought, okay, this is going to be a garbage cooler. I'm not even going to look at this. This is stupid. So I just skimmed right by it and I kept looking, kept looking, didn't find anything. So I came back to this. I thought, well, for 21 bucks, even if it's a turd, you know, I throw it out, I'm out 20 bucks, it's no big deal. Uh, but I started reading some of the reviews, and the reviews were really good, and I thought, you know, I should check this out just to see. I wonder if this would be okay. So I ordered it, and I'm going to give you my impressions. I, I think this is something you should look at if you're on a budget, and I'll tell you why. Um, first of all, the statistics on this are pretty good. The noise level is rated at 25.6 dBA, which is quite satisfactory. It has a 120 mil fan. It's got four uh, heat pipes in it. One nice thing about it is it's 148 millimeter height. Now, my Inwin 301 case does not take a huge cooler. It is a little bit constrained on the cooler height. 148 mil total height when you have a 120 mil fan is really, really good. So this will fit even in a fairly tight case. They advertise it for CPU TDPs of 120 to 225 watts. Now mine is 65. TDP ratings on air coolers I take with a grain of salt. You can pretty much cut them in half and that's a better representation of you know what they'll be able to handle if you're you know doing uh, ap using applications that have high CPU usage. So I thought you know what I'm going to get this thing. I'm going to put it on my Ryzen 5 4500. I'm going to see how it goes. So when this thing came in from Amazon and I opened the box, I was pretty impressed because, first of all, it does come with thermal paste. There's a little tube with thermal paste, which is always a nice touch. The aluminum heat sinks are relatively thick. They're well made. They're nicely aligned. The, the cooler looks good. Uh, the hardware is there for both AMD and Intel mounting. I didn't think the hardware was significantly less quality than I've seen from anybody else. When you have Noctua, Noctua always feels and looks very high end. This isn't that far behind. Um, and everything fit together perfectly. Uh, I took off my old cooler, I was able to put the uh, new mounting supports in, the spacers that they provide are good, the screws worked well, there was no problems getting it mounted, no problems getting it plugged in. I did use the thermal paste they provided because I wanted to see how that would perform. Thermal paste is, you know, of course important. So I put it in just the way it came out of the box, I had no issues. I think the quality is quite good, uh, and it looks good. So. The next thing was to sort of see how it performed. And what I did was I, I kind of let it, the thermal paste sort of sit in for a couple of days, use the computer, you know, and just my usual applications. And I decided I'd run Prime 95 again. So keep in mind on my AMD cooler, Prime 95 went straight to 92 degrees and then I had to shut it down to save my CPU. Uh, in this case, I did the exact same test, small FFTs, AVX and AVX2 instructions. And what I do, because I'm not testing for um, stability, I'm testing for thermals. I just let it heat up to the point where the thermal stabilized for 20-30 seconds, there's not much change, and then I, I read the temperature. It's what I did on the AMD cooler, it's what I did in this one. And it went up to about 80-81 degrees and then it plateaued. plateaued. It wouldn't get any higher than that. 
So I went from 92, where I had to shut down, all the way down to 81. Uh, that is, when you think about it, a huge difference in performance. That isn't small, that's significant. So I was really, really pleased with that result. Um, I'm finding when it comes to working with video and transcoding video, whereas before I'd get up about 76, 78 degrees on the CPU, now I don't crack 70. And the nice thing about that, there's a couple of things. This is not, I wouldn't say the fan in this is the quietest fan in the industry. It is very quiet up until about 60% uh, speed. Much over that and it starts to get, and it's not like an irritating noise, it's not like it rattles or anything, it's just the sound of the air flowing through the blades and through the cooler itself. But it's not the kind of fan you want to be running at 100% all the time. So the thing is, because the cooler is so much more effective and it's keeping the temperatures lower, that also means I can run a lower fan speed. So with this cooler in, I was able to drop my fan speeds or my, my fan speed profile Set out to about 60 degrees, it runs very low. It maxes out around 40, 45, 50%. Then at 60, it ramps up quite sharply until at 80, it's 80 degrees, it's running at 100%. So what that does for me is pretty much everything I do, this fan doesn't get much over, you know, that 50%, 55% range, which keeps it really quiet. Uh, and again, even when I'm doing, you know, video, work in video, that 65, 66 degrees is about all I ever see, which is a huge improvement from hitting 80 before. So this has been a fantastic addition to my computer for what I'm using it for, business purposes, video, photography. Uh, it is great. It's quiet. It's cool. It does everything I want. The only thing I wouldn't use this for and again, it's a 21, you have to remember, it's a $20 Canadian fan, $21 Canadian, 15 US. I mean, it's ridiculously inexpensive. I wouldn't use it in a gaming computer where you've got an overclock. Because if you're gaming, you've got an overclock, it's probably going to be up to that 80, 90, 100% fan speed all the time. Um, it's not going to be the quietest thing in the world then. It's still not obnoxious. It's way quieter than, quieter than lots of other fans. It's just that for me, being picky, I find it a little too loud at those, those higher end speeds. Of course, you could always just put on another 120 mil fan. You still got a super cheap cooler. Uh, it's just at that point, maybe you want to buy a better cooler to begin with. So at the end of the day, again, this is the Thermalrite Assassin X120 RSE. There are different versions of this. There's, um, there's an ARGB one that's a dollar more. It's a dollar for ARGB. They have other coolers as well, a little more expensive, about $10 more in that $30 Canadian range that are much heavier duty. They've got a whole whole line of coolers, a bunch of different options you can get. If you're looking for cooling on a budget, something significantly better than stock, they'll be quieter than stock, cooler than stock, I highly recommend this. I don't know how these guys sell this so cheap. I really don't. It's, it's amazing. And when you look at the quality, you know, you turn the cooler upside down and the heat pipe's all right there on the base plate. The machining is quite good. Everything is well put together. I really can't find much fault with it. No, it doesn't look like Noctua, but I don't expect it to. But it's 90% of Noctua for, like, what, a fifth the price. It's crazy. So, again, Thermalrite Assassin X120 RSC, any of the Thermalrite products... I wouldn't hesitate to recommend them dollar for dollar. I think this is probably the best bang for the buck air cooler you're going to find. I hope you found that helpful. Again, I'm Graham Hughes. My website is techtalk.net. I look forward to seeing you on the next video.